Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com. Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show, sponsored by Arnold Clark. I'm Peter Martin. Thank you very much for joining us on the programme. Alan Ruff is alongside me, and as ever, Thursday, Tam McManus is here as we get ready to talk European football. Yep, a familiar face heading back to Celtic Park in uh, Fraser Foster on a loan deal. Uh, Ruffy, <coughs> your assessment of him? Oh, he's a super goalkeeper. I'm sure he'll be a better goalkeeper if he'd been down in England. Uh, I don't know, I don't see how Craig Gordon will handle it if he is going to be number one. He's not going to come all the way up here to sit on the bench. Uh, so it'll be an interesting one to keep your eye on. Obviously, Craig's going to play tonight, but uh, with that in the back of his mind, he's only human. If he thinks that he's going to be demoted again, you know, after waiting, I think it's nearly seven months to get back in there, it's going to be a, a, a huge shock for him. Well, it's fair to say, it, uh, McManus, as you know yourself, there can be no sentiment in football. No, absolutely not. I think Celtic are looking for a top quality goalkeeper, and Fraser Foster is definitely a top quality goalkeeper. I think they sold him for, what, £10 million a number of years ago. For him to come in now would be a brilliant signing, I think, for Celtic. I don't think either the goalkeepers, Craig Gordon or Scott Bain, have really entirely convinced the Celtic support, to be honest with you. I think Fraser Foster coming in, he was a massive success up here at Celtic Park. And uh, I think the fans will, will rub their hands with him coming back in. I think he'll go straight in as Celtic's number one. It's, it's an interesting statement you make there. I, I, I look at the, both keepers. Um, I think Bain, I can see why uh, the change would be made because of a, a, a couple of errors. Um, was Gordon that flawed for you, uh, Ruffy? I no, mean, can I, you think of anything that was glaring? No, I think he just got tarred because the, the previous man I didn't think his distribution was, was particularly good. And uh, I think it improved. Uh, as a shot stopper, he, he was as good as, you know, and I don't... <laughs> Like all goalkeepers make mistakes, it's when you make the mistakes, if you make them in high profile games, but when he went out, you know, I, I didn't think it was less a loss of form, you know, it was an injury, you know, so he's been out and he's waited and waited, so if you, as an individual you're going to say, like, I've waited my time to get in here, you know, I've waited all this time and now I'm in, and then you're going to bring somebody up and drop me, and I've only played like one game or two games tonight, you know, so it's something he'll have to get his head around. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Well, I, I, I'm not going to build you up for the line. I don't know what it was like to be number two anywhere, but psychologically, how do these two keepers have to just get, they just have to get on with it, suck it up, really? Yeah, in this moment in time now, obviously the transfer window's coming to an end. I'm, I'm not saying that he would be uh, filing in a, a transfer request because he'll be on healthy wages, you know, wages that he won't get anywhere else. And he's at an age now where he might just say, well, I'll just sit tight here and be. A number two, but it's Scott Bain, what's he going to be saying? You know, he's done nothing wrong either. And now he's going to have to deal with, you know, could be third goalkeeper. Yeah, you know, well, they've so. done something wrong. Or he wouldn't have been looking for a goalkeeper in the first place. So, uh, you know, quite simply, he's probably assessed both of them and thought we need strengthening in that area, uh, injury or not. Um, one thing that's certain, Celtic will be wanting to avoid uh, the criticism that's been coming their way after uh, the defeat to Cluj over two legs in the Europa League, uh, the Champions League qualifiers, I beg your pardon. Uh, so let's find out a little bit more about who they're going to face in AIK Stockholm in tonight's Europa League match. So there are uh, a number of players that I think uh, Neil Lennon will have been uh, almost certainly uh, doing his homework on, but the first leg is at Celtic Park and the manager has a, a game plan that he wants to make sure that they've got a lead in this one. Well, we're at home and obviously we want to take a good advantage to Stockholm. I think they're an excellent side, 
some good players. Seb Larson, very experienced, um, rigid, big Scandinavian physical side as you would expect. So it'd be great if we could uh, get on the front foot and you know play as well as we can. We're free scoring at the minute, so we want to keep that obviously vein of form going. Yeah, Tom, I can't wait to see his lineup. Uh, I mean, because uh, the the C Callum McGregor caused major consternation uh, against Cluj. This time around, you're wondering what's going to happen in that back line. There are injuries as well. I think he's got to play Paul and Goalie and Julian. I think with the criticism he obviously he took for the for the selection in the Cluj game, I think he'll bring them both of them back in. Um, Obviously, going forward, he's got plenty of options in midfield and up front, but the back four, I think he's got to get the two new guys in. He's got to put his trust in them and he's got to play them. And uh, I think tonight you'll see the start of that. You know, get them in there. All right, they're going to make mistakes, but you've paid this money for them. You've got to play them. And I think the Celtic fans, I don't think he'll play Callum McGregor left back, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, I think he'll be back in his familiar central midfield role. And I think it's a big game for Celtic and for Neil Lennon, just to see the reaction of the Cluj game. Obviously, Dunfermline, a bit of a hangover from that game. Go out tonight, you know, get the fans right behind you again, get a good positive result and, and, and get going towards the, the old firm game at the end of the month. Yeah, here's the manager's take on the opposition. Well, I mean, Seb Larson's a, a household name here in Britain, you know, and for what he's achieved, not only with his, his club teams in England, but, you know, he's been a great player for Sweden as well. You know, he's still going strong at uh, 34. You know, he's an excellent player and had an excellent career. So, Seb players are very important you know his deliveries are, are excellent so he would probably be the standout player that maybe the Celtic fans would, would know about yeah they'll have to keep their eye on him and hope that uh, they don't get an away goal the Celtic fans are well used to watching teams get that crucial away goal and he is a threat even at 34 uh, the class tells when you look at the standard and the level that he played at Ruffy yeah and I think they'll know about it they've looked at videos they've looked at all the players you know that uh, and, and Neil's right, there will be a big, uh, strong side, a physical side. Uh, and I remember one manager, one Scotland manager, when we played them, uh, Sweden, when he, he said to one of the players, keep your eye on the big blonde boy. And there was a lots of them. <laughs> <laughs> Did you win, Robbie? I think we won two nothing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, the, day, the days when we used to just go over there and uh, and win uh, games regularly. Uh, oh, how we wish that would return. Uh, of course, there is one man who, who does know all about Seb Larson. He was his former teammate. I'm talking, of course, uh, about Craig Gordon when he was at Sunderland. Yeah, we've uh, we've started to to watch a few videos now and and do. Um our sort of preparations. So we, we know that we're we're in for a, a very difficult game. Um, I don't want to, to give away too much to you, but uh, certainly there is some, some good quality players in, in their team that we, we will have to, to keep an eye on. Um, I played with Seb Larson when I was at Sunderland with him, so I, I know all about his qualities and especially from, from dead balls. So it's, uh, it's something that we'll have to be wary of. Ruffy, what's your prediction on this one? <clears throat> uh, I'm, I'm hoping there's an early goal uh, to, to settle the nerves on the park and off the park. Uh, if they did get that early goal, I, I would think they would be good enough to go on and win 2 nothing. But you're right, conceding is the big one here. If they could come away with a clean sheet, I think that would be a great result. Sam? I think Celtic will get back on track tonight. I think they'll win 3 0. I think they'll get the early goal first 20 minutes and they'll, they'll go ahead and, and, and win comfortably and get the fans on side. I think that's what Neil Lennon needs. He needs a big result tonight. OK, um, what about Rangers? They're off to Poland. Let's find out about their opponents, Legia Warsaw. amazing how you get a side, Ruffy, that just over a period of, what, five, six years suddenly comes to the forefront of everyone in Scottish football. Legia Warsaw, the only thing that everybody thinks about is an ineligible player in Celtic back in the back door in European competition. Yeah, you're right. Uh, in, in three or four years, we were all talking about they were a good side and, and I really don't think they're as good as what they were, but certainly Rangers will go there. They know an away game will always be difficult, you know, again with them. It's all about how the scoring goes here. You know, if you if you lose a goal 
do you accept, okay, we can handle that and we can take them back home, or do you try and get the, the equaliser? It's all about when the goals get scored and who scored them for me in this one. Yeah, I was speaking to a young man from Poland today who said, you know, they will try as much as possible to make it as physical as possible against Rangers because they're not the side they once were. Yeah, I think that'll be the case tonight. I think Legia are obviously got a good pedigree in Europe over the last few years. But I think the way Rangers are playing, you know, they're scoring a lot of goals. The confidence is, is very, very high in the club. Um, and I think they'll go there confident that they can at least score a goal. And uh, if they can keep it tight at the back, I think it's a big step up for Rangers from the teams they've been playing. Uh, I think they'll be tested at the back and it'll be interesting to see how they react. But I think they can go over there and, and score a goal, maybe get a score draw. And, and I think they'll beat them at Ibrox. Yeah, I mean, you're looking at Rangers and, you, you know, much the same as Celtic going forward. They're a threat. 30 goals in nine mm -hmm. games to back up with what Tom's saying. Yeah, well, like that, Peter, we're all oozing a bit Celtic, yeah, the form they were on in the league. You know, 7 5. You know, and look what happened at Cluj. Tam's right, this is another level. I'm not particularly sure that our, our teams uh, in SPFL are a test for Rangers and Celtic now. This will be another level, and, and I think it's obviously away from home. It'll be a hostile environment, so they'll, they'll have to work hard to get something out of this game. Yeah, I'm sure a few people will be throwing things uh, at the screen at Ruffy when you say that the the other clubs are not a test for Celtic and Rangers now. There'll be a few, I think, will take well, points off them. Maybe not as many as last all season. All I'm going with is not so far. On the evidence <laughs> of what we saw well, with Rangers and Celtic and the score lines haven't materialised yeah. that way. But with all due respect, they haven't really played the best of the top half of the league yet. Is that fair? Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that. But this next three games, uh, the next three games coming up, I think will be a real test. Um, for both of them, yeah. For we, both we, of them. Well, we hope it's a test. Yeah. We want it to be a test. We don't want it to be two teams running away with it the way it used to be, you know, and everybody lost uh, imagination of what was going to happen. We need the Aberdeens, the Hibs, the Hearts. We need them all challenging. Yeah, uh, talking about Hearts, we will be discussing Craig Levine's comments ahead of their game against Celtic at the weekend on Sunday, of course, because uh, Celtic are in this Europa League uh, playoff, two games away from trying to make it to the group stages as are Rangers. Um, just on that point, how do you see it going? Leisure against Rangers? No, like Tom said, I think they're good enough. I think they're good enough. They've got players in the team uh, up front and midfield and set pieces as well to get a goal out of this. I, I can't see Rangers conceding any more than one, so I'm going to go one each as well. Yeah, so 1-1 one, one right across the board. I think we're all in agreement there. What about Craig Levine and Hearts? We'll tell you right after the quiz. Yeah, last week, uh, Tom McManus had a kind of a just a blank look on his face with the uh, quiz, but uh, now he's he's warming to it. Uh, I think he, he he's on the case. We tried to boost his confidence with a with an easy one this this week, Ruffy. And of course, if you know the answer, then get involved across all our social media. You could win yourself one of our PLZ team shirts in your team's favourite colours. Uh, I mentioned Craig Levine just before the quiz, Tam. He reckons that there's a fair amount of hysteria around Scottish football at the moment, most of it driven by the lunacy of social media. I'd have to agree with Craig on that. Um, I, I think if you log into Twitter or, or Facebook, whatever it is, on a Saturday night after a, after a game and when your team's get, getting beaten, I think the hysteria is, is way over the top. Um, you look at, for Neil Lennon, for example, he was kind of... <laughs> You know, flying along, you know, 28 game, uh, goals he'd scored in seven games, and then obviously the Clues result. All of a sudden, you've got Celtic fans calling for his head. You know what? He's not the man for the job. One result. So I think that people need to calm down. I think within football clubs, it's different. You know, you keep your counsel and you keep you know, kind of tight knit in there. Outside of that, you can't control it. And if I was a football player now, or a coach, or a manager, I, I just wouldn't be near social media. I wouldn't. I'd come right off it. I wouldn't even look on it because, as you said, you've got all the lunatics going on there after a game and. and they're tagging players as well, you know, on social media now you can actually speak to players direct and there's people going on and saying you're rubbish today and blah 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 to players, you know, and the yeah. confidence is probably low as it is, so I would just, I would bin it all together, uh, alright for the media types like, like ourselves, but yeah. 
players, managers, I just I totally come off social media. I think Ruffy uh, Tam's got the right attitude to social media. What he does is he throws a grenade and then throws the phone under the bed <laughs> and hides under the duvet for a couple of days and doesn't go back to it. It seems like a good policy that I, I think we should embrace, Ruffy. Yeah, and there's quite a lot of other people do it as well. Uh, one that springs to mind, he does it and then goes away down to England. Yeah. And uh, gets away from everything that's flying about. So, yeah, I agree with Tam. I don't think a professional footballer or anybody in football needs to be told when you've had a nightmare. Yeah, absolutely. You don't need people telling you how bad you've been. The one thing I do not like about it is it's given rise to, and it's given a voice to, uh, an element of people that, you know, more often than not in the 70s and the 80s, you would not know about their poisonous abuse or indeed their opinion, which did not matter. Um, what's happened now is this has allowed that platform for people to peddle their bile. It's okay. as simple as that. Yeah, well, uh, you, you would not have heard from them before. And now we are in the English Premier League in a situation where they are calling on the players uh, to just come off it completely right now uh, with the league and just give a blanket ban. Uh, but I, I don't think that serves any purpose, Tam, whatsoever, even up here. You know, at the end of the day, it's how you need to be educated on how to treat it, uh, you know, and then let the police deal with the madness. Yeah, yeah. listen, uh, you know, Harry Maguire, I think it was down south calling for, for passports and driver's licence. And, and, and why not? Because yeah. you've got people hiding behind pictures. It's not even their own name, their real name, their real picture. Hiding behind, you know, and, and really giving some serious abuse out to football players, racist abuse, you know, sectarian abuse up here in particular. There's no time for it, isn't you know, you've got to stamp it out, but you know, I I genuinely think that there's got to be something done, particularly in, in, in Twitter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, and you just wonder how can how can the police police the social media? It it would take so so much uh so many people to resource it as well, Ruffy. I don't know what you do, but yeah. but sooner or later there there are ways that you can actually nab someone who's who's logged on. Easily. Yeah, or in this day and age, I, I, I suppose there would be. But I think with, the, with the, the, the mental health thing coming to more to the fore now, I think young players trying to break into the game, that's not something you want to be getting involved in. You know, if people telling you how bad you are, I mean, that just, that, that's how it starts. You know, that then you have to deal with it as an individual. Yeah. You know, because you've obviously, you don't want to tell anybody else about it. So there's some of the stuff that's on it is... Just a joke. Yeah, uh, and to be fair, uh, Ruffy, I don't know if you remember this, but even before the social media, there was such a thing as letters as well. People would write letters, um, and and when we <laughs> when we started this show on television, I'll never forget it. We got a letter that was delivered, obviously, to us. Um, but you know, you get fan mail, Ruffy, uh, and this one, obviously, you know, just ladled into both of us. It was big time. <laughs> it was so good a letter, Tam, that I kept it, mm -hmm. and I'm going to get it. I'm actually going to put it in the book when we release the book about the madness that goes on in football, Ruffy. <laughs> when I release the book, I'm going to print this letter in it. That's <laughs> that really had a dig at you and I. It is the best ever. Um, but that's just the kind of a madness that goes on to the football, as far as Craig Levine's concerned. Um, no, no. Smith, the hamstring's not worth risking against Celtic. Suter won't make it. I don't know if Suter will make it. It doesn't look like it. Big miss for Hearts. You know, Stephen Naismith's a top player. He's he's been picking up quite a lot of injuries, but that must be a concern for Hearts, particularly after the big contract that they've given him. Yeah, uh, it's not a concern for Naismith. <laughs> not a concern for Naismith at all. He, he's happy with his deal, but you know he's picking up a lot of hamstring injuries, and for a forward type player, that that must be concerning because you're you're a lot of sprints. His game is getting past the striker and getting in the box and scoring goals. A lot of sprinting, and that 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 must be you know must be in the back of his mind now. If it's hopefully it's not a long term problem and he can get it sorted because he is he's a fantastic footballer, Stephen Naismith. Yeah, I mean we talk about it's big games coming up for Celtic and Rangers. <clears throat> does does Craig Levine get even himself a, a get out of jail pass because this one is obviously. You know, one that more often than not you wouldn't expect Hearts to do anything at Celtic Park. You know, Hearts have had a terrible record at <clears> Celtic <throat> Park for a long time. You know, they've took a few a few real hidings there. I think they, if they can go there and, and keep it down to one or two nil, but if it's another four or five job, then the fans again, their Hearts will be will be calling for Craig Levine's head because his record since he's took over from Ian Cathro has has been has been terrible. And you know, the style of play, everything concerned with Hearts. You know, the, the supporters are just not happy. They put a lot of money into the club. And uh, they'll be looking for some results, maybe not this weekend, but going forward, certainly contending at the top end of the league.
Yeah. Uh, must say congratulations to Aberdeen. They've named the uh, training ground after Dave Cormack. Of course, uh, the club's vice chairman has raised uh, part of the £12 million uh, to build the complex, which is due to be open in October. Uh, and again, with three training pitches, three G pitches and two grass pitches, mm -hmm. Robbie, I think it's going to be fabulous for Aberdeen. Yeah, I didn't think it was that far on. Uh, I thought we were uh, we well down the line, but they certainly have worked their socks off once they've had the... The planning permission and everything. Doesn't look far on there, Robbie. No, it does look, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't look as if it's going to be opening when you've just said it is. But uh, no, and, and I think once that is up and running, the, the stadium will be the next thing, you know, so just to try and recoup some of that money. Yeah, I hope that was an old photograph, but on that note, <laughs> we might use an old photograph for Tom McManus if he persists with this hair colour. But nevertheless, uh, keep the letters coming and we'll eventually pass them on to him uh, when he's feeling in a good mood just to bring him back down to earth. Social media, would you believe it? Thanks to Tom, thanks to Ruffy and from myself. Don't forget, you can subscribe on our YouTube channel and you'll get all the updates you need right across the globe in world football and unique video content as well. Thanks for watching. Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com.